It's time to crank up the heat. Because today's Brawl Star is Cranko. Only shooting stars break the Guess what time it is? It's time for Brawl. Time for Brawl. Time for Brawl. That's right, it's time for Brawl with a Cranko deck. This is the deck which was voted for on Twitter. Every day we will be having a different poll to pick the Brawl Star for the next day. And Cranko won, beating Calyx and... Oh no, I don't even remember who the other one is because they were so unimportant. Really super lame. I want to say Heliod? I think it was Heliod. Yeah, totally boring. Why have those when you can have Cranko? Tin Street Kingpin. So this is the second Cranko card ever printed. The first one is a lot better and a lot scarier, but this one's really cool too. So Cranko is a goblin from Ravnica, and his whole thing is that he comes with lots of other goblins. This one only makes goblins when he attacks. So the theme of the deck is to get Cranko out, make him big so he makes more goblins, and make him fast. So I've got a lot of cards that give haste. I've got things like Samut Sprint, I've got cards like the Torch Courier, I've got cards like Escape Velocity, I even just threw in Perforos. I actually already had a Cranko deck that I just tuned up a little bit, I just tweaked it an itty bitty bit for this event. So my dear Brawl Star, are you ready to do some damage? This deck is pretty aggressive, so we either win fast or lose hard, though sometimes you can just eke out a win by getting lucky with a burn spell somewhere near the end of a match. Let's see if we can pull it off and get some wins with Krenko. Oh my sweet beautiful goblin, I love you so much. I have a commander deck I've gotten to play more than a few times featuring the original Krenko. That one's filthy. I Like, Krenko commander is just dirty. Okay, I can keep this hand. Got a curve. It doesn't have any haste enablers for Krenko, but it does have a small sort of board wipe to help me catch up if I'm falling behind. If this is your first time watching the Brawl Stars, well, welcome to Brawl Stars every day to celebrate there being a free and open Brawl queue. I am making a different commander deck featuring a different commander, and I'm putting a poll up on Twitter for each day to decide... Hey, who's the next commander going to be? Ooh, speaking of commanders, I put Uro on the next poll. He's terrifying. Very spooky. And he's also probably about to land and ramp and gain them life. Life gain is my enemy with this deck. Galar Snarf. What a name. What a blue mana. Alright, Uro comes down. Uro goes, ooh, from the ceiling, they gain their life. And, oh my god, Lotus Field! Lotus Field, they just ramped so good! I, I haven't even had turn three yet, and I already got one, two, three, four, five mana. This is fine. Yeah, this, is, this is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and zerp a little bit at their face. It'll make me feel better. I have a Bone Crusher Giant. It'll make you feel better. Oh, my cat just brought me a toy. Sweet Bean! Sweet Bean! What did you do? What did you do? Now is not a good time to play fetch. The door is closed. <laughs> yeah, okay. My cat, Scraps. Scraps McGee, Cat Detective, by the way, full name, is very sweet and loves to play fetch. But she doesn't understand when a good time to play fetch is. Alright, they've used six mana for a Hedrid Crisis, this is fine. Mm-hmm, totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and lava coil that. Bye. And then pop down a gob. Boop. Get him! Huh, so this person didn't put Uro in their graveyard. They actually put it back into the command zone so they could cast it again. That makes sense. They don't have enough cards to exile yet for it. Voracious Hydra coming down, munching a gob. Not munching a bone crusher. Sorry, so I don't destroy their arcane signet. Smart enough. Hmm, I think now is the time to intervene. So I'm going to deal one, two, three. 
damage here. There's nothing else I could do with the mana, because I have to do this for x equals 3 at the minimum. I guess I could have done it for x equals 4 just for fun. Ugin! Ugin, are you going to make a block or are you going to kill my Bone Crusher Giant? You're going to kill my Bone Crusher Giant. All right. Thank you again for the toy, sweet kitty. She's having fun with it. At least I think it's fun. You know, it's really hard to tell with cats. Like, are you enjoying yourself or are you just kind of being a cat? I'm not sure. All right, got Runaway Steamkin down into Anax. My devotion is three right now, so Anax is a three, three. And hopefully between the two of these, they'll be able to get through Ugin's defenses. Oh, unless they get stolen. Yikes. Okay. I'm, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and do this. This is not what I want to do. This is simply what I'm going to do. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't want you to have these tokens. Okay, Scraps. If you hear strange rattling, that is the cat wrestling with the toy behind the green screen. She's a good girl, I promise. Just a little stupid. A little bit stupid. <gasps> questing beast! Well, I want a questing beast. Don't you mumble and grumble at me. How dare you deal damage to my Krenko. To my delicious Krenko. Who I haven't even played yet because I have, have a haste enabler. Ooh, Tamiyo can bring something back or start digging through the deck. Now it looks like they're going for something in the graveyard. Agent of Treachery again. I think it's time for me to quit this match and move on to the next one. Franco's not going to get to shine in a situation where it just gets stolen. To the next match! Poor little kingpin. Needs his time in the spotlight. Let's go. Thank you, wizards, for making this brawl queue open to everyone. It is fantastic. Also, I've mentioned in the comments for the previous Brawl Stars video, I cannot commit to making a Brawl Stars video every single day, though I'm still going to try to make as many as I can. It's a lot of time to either make a new video or like edit one together. I can see about recording one on my stream and just being like, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to ignore the chat for a couple minutes while I make Cranko time or whatever our next Legendary creature or planeswalker happens to be. I think the poll I put up for the next one was Calyx, Oro, or Kroxa. Uh, I'm actually gonna throw down the war boss here over Kranko. Because I do have a haste enabler with one more land. Also, Legion War Boss makes an impact to the turn it hits the battlefield. Get him! Got him. These two are like besties. They're both just making so many little gobbo friends. Hello, Anax. Okay, so I've got a sure strike. Uh, I could definitely just like skip Cranko this turn. No, gotta Cranko. Gotta, gotta have my Cranko. And I will simply swing in everybody except for the war boss. One of these goblins gonna get et. And I can lava coil Anax to get around his I make satyr tokens ability. It looks like my opponent's deck, John Falstaff's deck, is in a rally of brawl, so that means it's probably going to be Boros Aggro. Though you can be kinda like more mid-rangey mentor with that sort of with that sort of commander. She's great though. It's such just a good creature on her own. Synergizes with pretty much anything in those colors. Because it's just, hey, you played your creature. I'm going to make it better as long as it's in my colors, which you know it will be. All right, I'm going to start with a Lava Coil. Goodbye. And then this is going to be sort of weird to some people, but I'm going to pre-combat buff Cranko. And that is so the ability makes more goblins. I'm gonna attack with everybody except for Legion War Boss again. So now I have a lot of goblins. The number of goblins I have is 
many. And my opponent's just gonna have to deal with it. They are in the colors of both, like, wide red board wipes and entire board, board wipes in white. So if they hit, like, Storm's Wrath, or if they hit Shattered a Sky here, I'm losing all of this. I do have a little hasty follow-up, though. Oh no, Cavalier of Dawn. So Cavalier of Dawn gets to essentially transform something into a 3-3 Golem. So that will be Krenko in this case. But I don't think that's enough to save them, because I get a 3-3. And I'll still have all this. So I'm going to go ahead and say, good game. Pop down another land. And Phoenix of Ash, just for some extra damage. Oh, uh, what's your what's your pump ability? You know what? I'm going to actually put Escape Velocity on little Legion War Boss here. This already is haste. But this way, I can mentor the Phoenix of Ash to guarantee that three damage in the air. And I have 14 Goblin tokens. Victory for Krenko! That's what I like to see! Cranking out that victory. I know, my first game was a loss. They can't all be winners, but that second game? Stellar. Perfect Krenko aggro action. Now let's do it again. I say let's do it again, and that means that the next match is just going to be... And Krenko gets countered. And I take a nap underneath my desk, because I'm sad, and my opponent's turns take 20 minutes. Never mind. We're up against... You can barely see it there. Corvold! Corvold, the Munch Dragon. Corvold is pretty sweet as a commander, because it gives you access to everything in Jund, as well as the sacrifice synergy. And we have lands that sacrifice, we have creatures that sacrifice, we have spells that sacrifice. It's a good one. Corvold's a good commander. I also have a fairly slow hand, which maybe I shouldn't have kept. But I saw the Chandra and was thinking, huh, they might have a lot of small stuff out that I'm going to want to minus three to clear. This is definitely a big stuff. In fact, these are the two largest cards in my deck. The goose. The goose. The goose is on fire. Well, the goose will be on fire if I get a shock off the top of my deck. That's not a shock. That's an annex, though, and I'm going to play it. Uh, annex is good enough for me. So they've got a kitty cat, and they've got some food. In case the cat dies, they can bring it back. They've also got Corvold out here. They are at least two lands away from Corvold, which is good for me. Uh, the faster Corvold comes out, the worse it is for me, because there's a good chance I will die at the hands of that dragon. Red doesn't have a lot of defensive flyers. Red has a lot of aggressive creatures and some aggressive flyers, mostly phoenixes. But yeah, we don't we don't do stuff in the air here in mono red territory. You see this? Perforos, he doesn't have reach. You see Chandra? She doesn't care about birds. She just gets pecked, spot, pecked by them. Okie dokie. Well, it's time to swing in. See if they block while they're blocking. I really want to have a discounted light up the stage. I actually probably should not have played a land from my hand because I might end up hitting two lands off this. Yeah, I hit one land and I hit one mountain, so I'm going to go ahead and play the Rimrock Knight. And I can play this land next turn. I really don't want to play Krenko unless I can haste him out. Especially because these colors here that are being shown, Golgari with the potential for red from the Gilded Goose, could kill Cranko easily. Either red damage or black kill spells. Green fight spells I don't really have to worry about since they have a 1-1 one, one and an 0-2 oh, out. Is it Corvold time? Is it Corvold time? It's Corvold time. Here he comes. The big bad dragon. I love the flavor text on Corvold. So if you've never seen Corvold before, it's because he's actually not in Eldraine as a set. He is a Brawl commander that was sold as a Brawl deck. There are, you know, Brawl precons. But the reason why you probably have seen Krenko is because Krenko has become a pretty popular card just in meta play. Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at Perforos here. 
Hey, Perforos. You are perfect for this turn. Everybody gets haste. I probably don't want to swing in quite yet, even though I will get a nice wide army if I do. Yeah, Corvold and uh, Jun Sacrifice decks have been tournament stars since Cell Train came out. Nope, not, not doing anything. Not getting out of this chair. And Corvold gets bigger. And they're going to have to sacrifice something if they attack with him. Uh, maybe the goose. Maybe they'll make a food with the goose. Sacrifice the cat, bring the cat back with the food. It gets them... Well, they can't bring the cat back if they eat the food. Let's see what they munch. The kitty! The kitty got munched. Okay, and then they could make a food and bring the cat back with the food. Seven damage in the air. I take it. And I'm not that happy about it. What am I going to do? Nothing. So I have to be mindful of the fact that they can bring back that cat as a blocker at any time. Due to goose powers. Boulderine Reclamation. Nice. That is a fantastic card. Okay, so I've got three for Krenko. One for the Slipper. Krenko has haste. And we're going to do a lot of damage. They can't make food here because they don't have any mana up. And I've got 7, 10, 16, 19 damage coming at their face. It's a lot. It's a lot. Kapow, kablam, kapoosh. Six life remaining. Come on, breathe, MTG. Can you take me out this turn? Can you wipe the board? Ritual of Soot would do it. I mean, it would make... Perforos into a non-creature. I would be left with some satyr tokens, though. Uh, anything that doesn't exile here is going to leave me with satyrs. Storm's Wrath would help. No, that still leaves with satyrs, though. I'm thinking Cry the Carnarium wouldn't do it. Uh, Find and Finality also wouldn't do it. I mean, I would... I would not probably have lethal the next turn. Except maybe, you know, ticking Chandra at them. Let's find out. Priest of Forgotten Gods. I guess she can work as a blocker. Maybe they've got... Oh, if they have a way to steal Krenko for the turn. That would be rough. Claim the Firstborn Act of Treason. Not because they can sacrifice it, but because they could make their own goblin blockers. Okay, they didn't do anything. So I'm just going to attack with everybody here. I could have played Neheb given Neheb haste, but I'm actually going to keep everybody back here for Chandra's plus. Or potentially Castle Embreath. Okay, a uh, swift end to Anax is going to make it so Perforos isn't a creature. So I'm going to use Perforos' ability to play Neheb. Neheb has Trample. Everything has haste, so these two little dudes have haste. We go in. I think I've got enough damage to kill them. That's right, Perforos has an activated ability. You might put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield that gets sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. I want to kill them right now. And I think I can. Even if they block my biggest creatures... Unless they're gaining life some way I don't see. They, this gains some life after damage has been assigned. I don't think that's enough. And that's a good game for me. Way to be Krenko. I know that these three games went pretty fast, being a mono-red aggro deck. That's kind of the way it goes. But I hope you enjoyed seeing Krenko in action. And we also got a pretty good mix of decks that we went up against. Uh... I will have the decklist for this in the comments of this video or in the description of this video. I'm kind of figuring out which one works better so far. Uh, people don't like to expand the description. But if you'd like to keep an eye on Brawl Stars, it will be live every single day on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Amazonian. And whenever I'm able to, it will also be on YouTube with this extra content where we 
show off the deck that got built on stream. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you soon. Have a good one. Bye.